Let's get a preview of what to watch for today from Ed Devlin. He's founder of Devlin Capital, senior fellow at the C.D. Howe Institute and former head of Canadian Portfolio Management at PIMCO. Good to see you. Great to see you, John. I think we have to talk about two stories, okay. the U.S. and Canada. Let's just start with the markets right now. They're taking a big hit after the hotter than expected inflation numbers. What was your reaction? Uh, it kind of showed me that the markets were really priced for perfection. So if you actually look at the miss, it wasn't by much. It was kind of you know, uh, 10 basis points you know, on core and 10 basis points on headline relative to the estimates. And uh, you know, we had a massive sell-off in the front end of the U.S. bond market. You know, yields in the short-dated bonds were like two years, were up like 20 basis points. So they've effectively been just within a matter of minutes wiped out one rate cut that was priced in down there. Canada is following suit a little bit, but uh, you know, not as much. And so um, to me, I mean, and look at stocks tumbling and everything else, it's just uh, everybody was looking for Goldilocks. And as soon as they see that Goldilocks isn't quite there, I think they run for the, run for the hills. It's interesting though, you know, you get all these different Fed officials that say this and that, and the ones that are more hawkish tend to be hawkish, the ones that are more dovish tend to be dovish. But one lasting message, actually uh, a former Fed official, Jim Bullard, kind of reiterated this message speaking with Bloomberg in the last couple of days. Literally, the Fed kind of set the table for three rate cuts. Is that is that not fair to say? I know you're talking yes. about being priced for perfection and people's expectations versus, you know, the reality of the data right now. But it was the Fed that was sort of painting a picture towards three rate cuts this year. Absolutely. And I think that uh, that's probably warranted. You know, when you get to these tipping points and cycles that, you know, um, the data can get a little noisy. Yeah. And, we've, and, and it's been very noisy post-pandemic. And so, you know, the Fed, you know, all the central banks, but the Fed and the Bank of Canada are sitting here looking at, we had such an inflation spike, we got to be aggressive, we got to get our inflation fighting credentials back again. That being said, the data you're looking at is pretty obviously weakening. Okay, so tipping point, weakening data. You, I'm just going to remind our audience, have been someone who has been concerned about the level of interest rates in this country, what it means ultimately for the economy. We've got a Bank of Canada interest rate decision in just over 30 minutes time. What are you watching for today? The key will be, I'm looking for them, the key will be their forecasts, right? And of the forecasts, the key ones to look for would be I'm curious what they, they think of U.S. growth. In the last M NPR, they had a little below two. I think it was like 1.7 or something. Do they revise that up? Because that's good for Canada, and that would be something that might uh, keep the bank on hold. Um, looking at, uh, you know, uh, also Canadian growth, obviously. Um, the last time, the last report would have had an output gap or a deficiency of about 1%, a little less, like 0.8 or something. Do they, do, they revise, do they really revise that up or do they revise that down? I would think it would go up by the way. And then I think really critical is how they want to deal with immigration and housing and, you know, the relationship there and, you know, how would that uh, factor into their decision making, right? So do they want to give us a bit more clarity? Because we have a monetary policy report today, they can explain a lot. And so to me, this is, I, I would have expected prior to the CPI number down, down south, uh, but I still hold this view, is that they're going to set the table for rate cuts down the road and how they can do that is through their forecasts. And what is the determining factor for them being willing to cross over that line in the sand? What, you know, because to your point, they've been very cautious about making the same kind of commitment that the Fed has already made. And, mm -hmm. and maybe the Fed is paying the price for that this morning. We don't know. This is just one set this of numbers in a, yeah. in a market where you're, uh, you, you've already been betting on a cool down. But yeah. what would be the determining factor for the Bank of Canada being like, OK, we're ready to cut? Well, I think it's inflation. It's a short answer. So um, we've actually had a couple of weak prints. Um, you know, they, they've, they've, always, they've been publishing a lot of three-month moving averages. So if we get another weak print, a strong, a strong one falls off, a weak one falls in. But you know, they don't, they don't hang their hat on any one statistic. But I would say, broadly speaking, if inflation is now kind of in the target, and you got unemployment drifting higher, right? The, uh, the unemployment rates drifted from just below five to just above six. Yeah. Um, if that kind of continues, I, I think they want to see a little more data and then get to move. Because in the end, you know, their estimate of a neutral rate, you know, would be somewhere between two and three and we're at five. So they're quite restrictive. And if the economy is slowing, it's time to take the foot off the brake. And obviously people are trying to make real life decisions based on where interest rates go, that's mm -hmm. true in things like the mortgage market. You're somebody who professionally puts money on the line based on where you think interest rates are going. What is your current expectation for what happens with rates in Canada in 2024? 
Yeah, I still think rates, you know, go lower, whether it's, you know, I, I kind of like, I like Canada over the U.S., and that trade's worked really well this morning, um, because U.S. rates have gone up a lot more than Canadian rates have. You like it in terms of betting on the idea of rate cuts coming? Yeah, I bet betting on more rate cuts in Canada than the U.S. Got it. That's that's the bet, to be clear. Yeah. And um, so, you know, I, like, I still like U.S. agency mortgages, which are, you know, very... Uh, uh, historically wide spreads, given the uniqueness of that market. Um, I still, uh, yeah, I like, uh, I think Canada, you know, once they get going, they're going to get going fast. Uh, that would be my perspective. But, um, okay, okay, so why don't you elaborate on that? Yeah, so, you know, I think what they, again, they're, they've got a, they're kind of looking at coincident data and sometimes even lagging data, inflation, et cetera. And, but they need to keep that street cred because, or inflation, Credentials, yeah. because of what happened in the last year or so. So, but once they go, you know, the Canadian economy cannot handle these rates. It just cannot, and so they have to go down substantially. Here's a really simple way of thinking about it: Before the pandemic, rates were so low that the real interest rates adjusted for inflation were zero. We went through a pandemic. We spent like drunken sailors, collectively the G7, and now we got interest rates that are two, two to 300 basis points higher. And, and we have more debt. How did we improve? Like, when you in real interest rates go up, usually that's a sign of growth, and yeah. we're getting better. How did we get better? I don't think we did get better. I think this is going to go away.